Hey, welcome back folks. Jojo here, Wolfpack Garage Vlog. It's been a while since we worked on this car. You know, the week kind of got away from us a little bit. Had a lot of family stuff going on. Um, we did record some content. New video is going to come out soon. It's going to be pretty cool, so stick around for that. We want to get back on the disc brake conversion on the old 66 Impala. So I did one side. I took the video. I really was kind of rushing through it and it didn't turn out well so i'm going to take my time and do the other side i got shane boy here to help me oh yeah so hopefully this side goes smoother um, because if it doesn't we'll just have to take apart both sides and redo them so like we said the kit from cpp is just literally a, a bracket and a rotor and caliper from like a chevelle right i already cleaned the rotor off you know it comes with that grease they put on there so it doesn't rust on the boat ride from China. China. I already put some disc brake quiet on the backs of the pads. You know, people use all kinds of different stuff. This is just what I use, not a sponsor, obviously. So the first thing I want to do is pack the inner bearing, inner wheel bearing. I use the old easy squeeze. It's so easy. I don't like getting that shit in my hand, so I just bought this. For you guys that don't have one of these, just go out and buy one. They're not expensive. You drop the bearing in there, you put the cone down on the inner part of the wheel bearing, and you just press on that hog until you can see the grease coming up in between the rollers. I know it's hard to see, but look at there. Boom. I mean, packed. Done. How long did that take us? Not long at all is the answer to that question. And I'm not going like this, scraping against my palm. Take a little blobule, put her on the inner race there. I clean that off too. And then, you know, obviously coat the outer rollers. What kind of grease is that, Jojo? This is high temp wheel bearing grease. It was blue and then I refilled it with red. So it's kind of a purple oh, okay. because we got a little, you know, a different <clears throat> branding deal here. Yeah. But it's all the same, you know. Yeah. Grease is grease. Grease is grease. We got our grease seal here. Look at that. Yeah, we'll, and then uh, we'll take our block of wood for a driver. Driver. And, and our favorite Illinois hammer, one of the best hammers oh, ever yeah. created What's ever. What's it called? S-Wing. S-Wing. Yep. Not too far from where we live, right yeah, here. Yeah, you locally know, made. Locally made in Illinois. Mm -hmm. Gets the job done yet again. It is. There it is. Give her a little wipey wipe. Seal is in. Yep, she's just flush. Man. They sell these now at like even the auto parts stores. I bought this on a tool truck. It was pretty expensive 20 years ago. This was yeah. like breaking edge technology yeah. kind of stuff. What tool truck? I think it was Snap On, bro. Was this, it is, really? this is a blue point. Oh, okay. You know, so yeah. you're reaching back in JoJo history there. Oh, yeah. Oof. Blue point. Blue point. Right over there. Right over there. It's good. Hit it right there. If my arms can do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See the grease coming up? Oh, there it is. Yep. yep. It's coming through. Now, look at here. How greasy did my hand get? Not oh, very greasy. Exactly. There it is. There it is. Bingo. Yeah. That's the way to pack a bearing, I tell pack you what. Them. Pack a bearing. Whatever. Yeah. All right. Well, let's head over to the car. Okay. And we'll drag all this stuff over there, and then yeah. we'll get to hanging. Over to the Impala. So on this side, I'd like to say we're guided by experience because we had an experience on the driver's side putting it together, but we've learned the errors of our ways to try to help you, the viewer, do this swap successfully in your garage. That's right. <laughs> I That's think. That's what it's all about. That's what... You know, does Jojo buy shop rags? No, he gets them for Christmas. Where he uses his old undies, Ooh. which he also gets new ones for for Christmas. So Ooh. don't worry, I washed them. Okay. Yeah, they're mostly washed. Yeah. All right, we're good. Okay. All right, let's get started. Okay. All right, here we are. Check folks. out those joints. Yeah, new ball joints. If you saw the previous episode, that was uh, getting the rear, uh, the lower ball joint to fit was a task. Let's put the bracket on first. Yeah, get the bracket on first. So. This bracket here goes on like this yeah, in the bracket. Bad. So right there is how it goes. Okay. One of these is longer than the other. One of these bolts because there's like more meat on the back of this steering knuckle. So that goes on there like that. Yeah. 
And this one goes on here like this. And then, of course, you know Jojo, right? Oh, yeah. He loves his oh, red Loctite. He too. loves his red Loctite. So yeah. he's going to put a little schmutz on there. Yeah. Ooh, sorry, Shane Boy. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. Especially when it comes time to your old cars. Yeah. I've had enough incidents lately. Yeah. I just don't want to take any more chances with stuff like that. Yeah. I do. No, I'll just hang on the nut. Oh, okay. Hit it. Yeah. Ready? Nope. Oh. Just gay. <laughs> yeah, flip the wrench because I don't want you to whack me in the arm with that old school craftsman. The old craftsman. High man. clicker. Oh. All right. Okay. This takes the place of the anchor bolt front brake shoe uh, anchor was that take this bolt here takes place of that and it also remember that big funky bolt and it held the wheel cylinder on here yeah that's all gone now because we got this more modern setup and that goes here but Check look at that there. out they got a big yeah, honking shake proof washer somebody did some yeah some they did some ciphering yes, they probably might have used the computers and they got to work to to build a better mousetrap, man. They did a, you mm -hmm. know, they made a pretty good setup. And it uses all, like, regular-ass GM parts that you can go down to the O'Reilly's and get. Mm -hmm. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. O'Reilly's? No, I wish. But Yeah. And then. Yeah, maybe one day. The last bolt. Got the old sleeve. Yeah. Boom. Red Loctite back. again. Yeah. I pity the fool who's got to take all this apart. I but... know. I was just going to say that. <laughs> You know what though? Red Loctite ain't that tough though. You hit it with a torch, boom, yeah. it releases. It ain't that big of a deal. Yeah. People get all, you know, freaked out about it. Yeah, no need to get freaked out. Here, let me know you know, that wrench back there. CPP will tell you you need to torque all this stuff to 140 foot pounds. <laughs> and that's getting up there. No kidding. I think that's a lot, but whatever. And that's just general torque requirements. They put a little chart on their instruction sheets but guess what i don't want this stuff to fall off so we got, we're in good hands yeah because we have brutus we got the brutus here we got the brutus but this thing is so obnoxious it's hard to like get in here and i know i just was starting to think that Joe yeah Joe. That so here you go is... shame boy why don't you go ahead and hog it that's a big clicker yeah oh Heck she don't. clicks all i bet here we go we're gonna here start we go. tight Oh, heck, that's nothing. That's child's play. Yeah, for Brutus. For Brutus. Go on and give her a clicker. Ooh. Oh, come on now. Let's get it. Get it. I might have to stand on it, Joey. There it is. All right, Hoss. Hoss. See if you ate your Wheaties this morning. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, there Ooh. it is. There it is. Yep. All right, ready? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, no, I'm not. What? <laughs> Turn for nothing? Hold on a second. <gasps> okay. There you go. Okay, you're you ready. got her now. Okay, here we go. Yep. Ooh, there it is. Come on. Boom. <sighs> that was easy. All right, one more, old shame boy. Yeah, how how loose is that one now? Pretty Are you gonna tight. have to crank it for a mile before we get to the torque or what? Maybe. Oh yeah, that's Johnny. That Johnny. That helps. All right. Boom. Bingo! Done. Then we're done with that. Yeah, no rotor on again. Let's put the rotor on now. We're gonna put the rotor on? Let's put the rotor on now. Alright, let's put it on. Start getting these parts on there. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, there it is. Alright. We gotta put it? that burn in there. Yep. Okay. So take note, there's two sets of holes for the for the cotter pin. Cotter pin. Because that's what screwed us up on the on the other side. I did not see the second hole for the cotter pin. And that sucker was hiding. And I played heck trying to figure out how to, like what cotter pin size to use to, that would go with this whole setup. Okay, castle nut. And the castle nut they give you has a super big ridge. Because they know this setup sticks out a little more than the original so they gave you like a special castle nut that's nice of them yeah that's what you'd like to see right there right it's somebody that knew they had a, they had a problem 
Right. But they use American ingenuity to yes. solve it. Right. This is common courtesy for the guy to install it. Yeah. I mean, any lesser of a kit, right? They would have just been like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Make sure you seat the burn. Yeah, I'm going to seat her down. Cedar, Joey. Cedar. Tight there. You want no slop in it. Right. Just a little drag. Yep. So yeah, it's tight though. The whole deal is tight. So I had to actually tap the other. See that? I mean, yeah. when I said it's tight, look, I'm saying it's right there. Okay. Yep. If your bearings are just a little loose, it's gonna, um, it's that pin ain't gonna go in there, and then you're gonna be like, what the heck? Yeah. So look at here. Straighten her out. Yep, give her a little tap, tap, tap a -roo. Okay. And we're going to bring her around. Bring her around. Okay, now you know what JoJo does. He, he gives her another tap -a to keep her flush. I don't care if I shroom the end of that. The impact will whew, re thread that last thread on that spindle oh, like yeah. nobody's business. Nobody's business. And then. Snipper. Oh, JK, but still, yeah. you should probably should be wearing safety glasses, yeah, you or whatever. Didn't, you didn't give me no safety glasses. Oh, shoot, I'm sorry. That's I didn't want to, you know what I mean? Good thing I'm not laying upside down in the car. Yeah. You know what I you mean? You don't want to drop a ratchet yeah. in your eyeball, right? Yeah, you know how that feels. Oh, yeah. No, look at here. I, I played heck with these, too, trying to get these dust caps to fit on the new rotors. So what I did is I, I took and I put little four little bends in like an X pattern, just a little bit, to give it a little taper because these are almost like exactly the same size as the the hole itself just enough where i can put it on there kind of oh right here Shame oh. boy. <laughs> i found this on the side of the Boom. road um it's just weird it was just laying on the sidewalk and i picked it up so i put it in my car and brought it home check that out because it was on the side of the road and it fits every fits once that in dust a while pack. you get lucky huh? yeah it's yeah. funny how that works yeah it's even stainless, so I don't know what the heck, but whatever. Driver home. Yeah. There it is. Check so, yeah, this out. isn't perfect. I think maybe I know a guy that might be able to put it, like, well, the flat spot on this for me to hit it better. I mean, how often are you going to have to drive a brand new a brand new dust cap on a rotor, right? How, I mean, how many times in your life are you going to do that? Check so that, that turned out a lot better than the other side. We learned a lot. We followed the instructions. I mean, how often am I going to drive this car, right? Well, you know. That one summer, you didn't drive it a lot. I drove it a lot. You did you drive it a lot. Well, here's the deal, right? When you first buy an old car, right, yeah. you're elated to get it going and drive it. And yeah. then, like, then reality sets and you're like, yeah, ah, now what the heck? Yeah. So, yeah, I drove it a lot. I drove the Suburban a lot at first, too. Yeah. All right. With the rotor installed, we, our focus can now turn on to the caliper. These come real nice, already painted. Oh, look, they tell you not to use Brutus on that. Oh, <laughs> more Brutus. Yeah. Oh, boy, Brutus. What I like to do with these is I use high temp caliper grease for the slides. And Shane Boy, look at that. I mean, how long have I had that, right? I was going to say, that 20 looks years. familiar. Yeah. It? yeah. 20 years at least. Dude, you know what? I think you used that when we did the brakes on my black truck. Oh, yeah, for right. sure. Uh, like 15 10 years, years ago, ago. Yeah. 10 years ago, yeah, at least. Yeah, I mean, I think I've only bought one of those in my mm. professional career, and that's the one right Ultra there. Ultra disc brake caliper grease, yep, and it works really well. It has a really super high melting point, and it's like super ultra mega water resistant. Yeah, that's a nice grease, I like that. Yeah, it works really good. So, I like to lube up where the o rings go for the pins and the, and the slides for the caliper. Give them a fighting chance, right? Yeah. And you know, disc brakes are not maintenance free. All right, they're, they're less maintenance, but I still feel it is necessary once a year or once every, at least once every other year to take the caliper off and grease the slides with a mixture. I use a big blob of that and a big blob of anisees and mix it together with oh. a screwdriver and then use a tin brush and just smear the stuff on there. Yeah. It's kind of like the best of both worlds. Yeah. yeah, it's messy and all that. Yeah. But you know, if you live in the rust belt, if you live in the rust belt, 
you're you're in trouble. Yeah. You do everything you can to fight the rust. Right. And and you still have troubles. And you still have trouble. Yes, sir. So that's what I do. I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but it's it's right in my mind, and that's all you know in your mind. In your mind. In your mind, man. Oh, Shane. What? We gotta get the brake pads. We left them on oh, the counter. Sure. I'll go get them. No secret, right? Whenever you're putting pads on, you always want the squealer to go towards rotation. Because if you put it on backwards, it's liable just to boop, bend and snap and break right off. So this is the inner pad that faces the piston. It goes like this. You know, when it gets worn, boom, squealer there. So mm -hmm. we're good there. I already put on my little anti-squeal schmutz. And then obviously we'll, we'll squeeze this down after we get the whole thing going here. So that's the anti-rattle for the outside. So that goes like that. Try not to be a degenerate like me and get grease everywhere. Slip on there. Oh, look at there. Shane boy, you want to slip these pins oh, yeah. in there and get them started? I forgot the socket. So oh, I'm going to get that. He's got to go with the socket. I got to get the socket. Okay. They are threaded. Now, if I was doing this professionally, right, I would not be taking as much time and explaining all this. I'd be thrashing and bashing on yeah. this thing Slam, using bam thank you man using every electric electric or air powered device i could to get the job done as quick as possible yeah but here in in the wolfpack garage yeah time is irrelevant when i first started out go ahead as a professional mechanic harbor freight was a mail-in catalog Ooh, they didn't even have a website yet really? i mean it was aol dial up all that stuff so you know the snap on guy calls harbor freight hobo freight Harbor fraud. Oh yeah, okay. So how much is fourteen foot pounds? <gasps> Click. Oh, that must be it. That's it. I guess fourteen. Well, are you sure? So here's you the better deal. get a little more. No, look, bro. Here's why they tell you to only put fourteen foot pounds on those caliper pins. If you crank them with a big like Mondo air ratchet or whatever, you could crush that little sleeve in there, and that'll make a high spot for the caliper to have to work over, and it just won't. Like there's not enough there for that to happen. It'll get yeah. hung up and you'll you'll wear out the inner pad and then you'll be SOL. No slide. No slide. So here we go, ready? Same thing that happens when they get all rusty. Click, yeah, they exactly. Just they just don't slide. They no slide. So what we're talking about for all you young buckaroos at home working on an old Chevy oh. with your Wranglers on or whatever. Shane boy, why don't you demonstrate what I did? Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, you wanna, you wanna bend this clip this or this little tab you want to bend it and squeeze the pad tight against the caliper so it doesn't rattle just like that yep a you guy right there that's yep. what we're talking yep you can do it on both sides right right down here see there crank that hoss yep right crank there. the hoss and what that does is right keep that there. outer pad from moving around and making noise during braking or even yes when it's sir um, the inner pad has this little clip that kind of holds it in the piston and that's great, you know, yeah. and then it's held tight here and here against the caliper. Yeah. GM, great design. But yeah, there it is. I mean, look at that CCP for the win. That is a, that's a setup, you know, of course we got banjo bolts and hoses, but the next big, huge task, boom, brake lines. That's going to be a hog and a half. A hog and a half. Right, Shane boy. Are they rusty on this thing? Uh, the one to the rear is rusty and leaking, but more importantly, it's a single pot master cylinder. So, well, that's coming off. Yeah, and we're gonna yeah, that's coming off. We're gonna get rid of all the lines and put on a dual circuit master cylinder line kit. Yeah, that'll be nice. Yeah, with power. Oh yeah, it'll be really nice. It'll drive like you know something far more modern than it is. At least it will stop like it, I guess. Right, Shane boy? Yeah. That's the goal. Well, anyway. who wants drum on the front? <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. About ready to wrap this up. Wrap right? it up. Yeah. All First right. First time. Uh, yeah? Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate your help, Shane boy. Front brakes are on. Both both sides are on now. Now yep. the rubber is about ready to hit the road. The lines are going to be, <laughs> I got a feeling the lines are going to be a deal. But you know what? We got to do what we got to do. All right, Daryls and Darylettes, I hope you enjoyed this little semi-how-to tutorial on putting the disc brakes on the car. Not a, not a super 
hard task. It's just, you know, if a guy doesn't have a bearing packer and a torque wrench and stuff, you, you can know, still do the job. You can still do the job. It just is even more of a pain in the ass than it normally would be. Yeah. So, you yep. know, all common GM stuff, you know, what's, what's good for GM is good for the country. Well, that rings true today because this is far more modern than this car and it, it works great today. So I can dig that. Yep. All right, folks, as always, if you're not going to be good, at least be good at it. Is that a good one? Uh, never fails with JoJo. I like it. All right. Yeah. Okay.